Hello everyone and welcome to the I'll Try That podcast. This week we're going to be talking about Gun Brewery from Sussex in the UK. But first, the hot topic. Joe, it sounded like you're introducing a kids TV show. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> Guys, whenever we do these, these podcast episodes, dealing with you two, I have to pretend that I'm on a kids episode. It's the only way to get through the <laughs> session. All right, what's the hot topic then? So, I have some fun news to talk about. We're travelling back to the world of our friends at BrewDog, and I have just received, hot off the press, hot from the postman, Postman Pat has delivered my Lost Lagers. Now, so that's a Postman uh, Pat episode I'd want to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that just sounds like a Royal Mail advert, doesn't it? Postman Pat and the Lost Lagers, like they just lost yes. the post. <laughs> So, the Lost Lagers is, if anyone that doesn't know, is BrewDog's attempt at trying to be very eco, you know, trying to push their eco credentials. So, their whole proposition with this beer is that, you know, they've created, you know, these Lost Lost Lagers to kind of highlight the fact that they are the own, they claim to be the only net neutral or carbon neutral brewery out there. Now, I have seen a schematic of their bre- their newest brewery in Scotland, and everything that they're doing is, is kind of like trying to equal, equal circle, like it's kind of about sustainability, uh, you know, everything from the, 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 the heat through to the trucks is eco, you know, it's trying to put back to the world. So I do kind of believe that they are a net neutral company. You know, they've obviously got some credentials that say they do that. I just want to say, like, what is net neutral c- carbon thing? Carbon mean, neutral. Exactly? So yeah. companies and people... We are carbon positive, so we produce carbon. Everything we do from driving cars to flying in planes to just putting out, like, buying plastic creates, like, that's a usage of carbon. So that's all kind of totted up. And so what the biggest thing for companies to do right now is to try and become carbon negative. So you can become carbon negative in a couple of ways. The easiest way is to buy down your carbon footprint. So you basically pay money to offset your carbon emissions so that's what a lot of companies are doing and that's why they can kind of claim they're carbon negative because they're basically paying people off they're paying off that you know whatever they put out there in carbon they're paying off the difference with with actual money when it comes to companies like BrewDog and what we're starting to see, because this has only been a thing that's been, a, you know, really carbon neutral companies has only been a thing for the last couple of years. Uh, so we're starting to see now the very first companies that are actually carbon negative, where they are producing from the ground up facilities and production capabilities and logistics and operations that don't create a positive carbon output. So BrewDog are, as we know, we've talked about their sustainability credentials in the past and, you know, the fact this is down to their values. You know, they have got this new facility in Scotland that every single touch point is doesn't create a positive carbon output. That that must have cost a fortune. Like, just think about how different the technology must be because it can't be readily available because everyone would have it. So it must have cost them a lot for the point of being carbon neutral it must have cost them a lot to make it happen if that makes sense so just for the sake of being able to say that which i understand is an amazing thing to say and it should be they believe it's what should happen but it is amazing investment from them yeah this 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 facility cost millions of pounds to to create i don't think brew dog are missing a penny or two though are they yeah but you've also got to be sustainable you can't just like spend money for the sake but as in i understand obviously they're a big company and they're doing very well and part of their ethos is why they're doing so well. So it does make sense to do this sort of thing. But you can't bat away from the fact that it must have cost a lot of money and a lot of research to make this happen. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, this, this to be a carbon neutral company, you've got to take investment, whether you're buying it down yourself or you're doing it in the pure sense that BrewDog, BrewDog are doing, where you actually make from the ground up yourself carbon neutral or negative even. Well, it's the age-old ethos. You've got to spend money to make money. <laughs> now, didn't, didn't, wasn't that from a wise, a wise old scholar of uh, 50 Cent who said that? Was it 50, was, was it 50 Cent? <laughs> no, no, no. No, his famous quote was... Uh, li- uh, Get rich or die trying. That's it. <laughs> That's definitely... <laughs>
Get rid of your dice. Don't, we're not saying that, guys. We're definitely not going to endorse that in any way. <laughs> yeah. Hip hoppity hip hip. <laughs> So in the Pursuit of Hoppiness, we are talking about Gun Brewery, which is from the farms of Sussex. Simo, tell me more about where and the starting points of Gun Brewery. So I absolutely love their story. So we brew at Gun Hill on a beautiful 140 acre mixed farm in the Sussex Weald. The farm has a history of, of hop growing and some survive to this day in the hedgerows, which is cool. Um, we spent a year refitting the barn and installing all the equipment ourselves before selling our first pint in 2015. We are making, we aim to tread lightly on our surroundings. We generate mo- much of their own power. Uh, heating is from wood powered boilers. Um, our spent grain keeps the livestock al- alive. They also, uh, all the water used for brewing comes from their own spring source deep below the organically farmed land. The water is microfiltered and UV treated to ensure its purity without the need for chemicals. That's incredible. It sounds like you were trying to sell me a holiday destination, Simo, and (laughs) I would definitely want to go. Mm. I mean, also, the one thing I love about their website, you type in Gun Brewery and the first thing you see is a shed in a field with their with their logo in the middle. Then when you enter that, you then get um, uh, like a farm, like tractor path going into a, into obviously a a farm with this with the saying, which is a little bit shifty. Get your gun. <laughs> so I think going back to the logo, I was so perplexed as to what this logo actually is. Now that you say shed or something about sheds this might be like shed panels which is what they made but basically gun brewery's logo is an a with regards to the logo okay as you said oh what is it and they actually say a hobo was a migratory laborer i'm probably getting that word wrong to help cope with the uncertainties of life on the road hobos developed a secret system of symbols our symbol meant at the time man with gun lives here and i think it's it stems back to the fact that farmers obviously would naturally have their own licensed weapons to protect their land and things. I think we should go back to using symbols on doors again to say who's in the apartment and like what characteristics they may have. So I could have man with diabetes and some form of symbol on my door for that. I think the man with diabetes symbol would be a cupcake with a cross through it. <laughs> So, Drabble, what about my logo and Joe's logo? What do you think? Joe, yours would just be a man in a top hat for <laughs> middle class. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got this, don't worry. Okay. So, Simo's one would be a kangaroo with a suitcase because he's leaving to Australia. So everything about uh, Gun Brewery is, is, is quite interesting. As in, like, the fact that they are quite new, they've been around, they're all about their, his, like... They're quite root. Their roots are, d- are drenched in farms and farm growing, but I love the nomenclature that they've given their beers. So you have a. I am drinking right now a Scaramanga Pale Ale. You have a Parabellum Milk Stout, a Project Babylon Pale Ale, a Zamzama IPA. Uh, How's the Serenity Pale Ale? Uh, Chumney Bluster, which I also have. A Base Ejection Smoked Rye, which is a smoked beer. A Numb Angel Lager, which is one of their standout beers. A Velo Dog Strong Pale. And a Red Ale that's called Red Ale. I want to know how they worked out all of their names. I was thinking they maybe had a sci-fi vibe to them when I heard some of them, because they've named some after... some. There's, there's a few sci-fi film names in there. But there, there are a few not. I think they just, I think they might have just chucked like a Scrabble tile board and just put some stuff together. Um, well, I have the Numb Angel Lager, so um, and it's gluten free, which I find interesting on the side. What have you guys got? Well, I've got the Scaramanga, three point nine percent gluten free pale ale. I've got the Chumney Bluster, best bitter. Drabwell, what do you think? What do you think of your beer? Everything in your room, Travis. I just must say on the video, it's, it's got, got a very big. pink. 
<laughs> What's going on? Why is everything so pink? <laughs> this colour's changing. Why is everything I don't so know. pink in your room? <laughs> right, Trabwell, tell us about your beer. If you, does it Tell us about the taste and the flavour of your beer. Go. Uh, well, I'm not the biggest bitter fan when it comes down to it. But um, it's fine. It's it's very oaky. It's got um, it's got a very oaky taste to it, and it's very smooth. And it does it does go down well, um, which is quite nice. But it says it's fruity, which which I don't get. Uh, but I do get I do get the bitterness coming through, which is nice. Um, my beer, well, my lager, the Numb Angel. Um, I would say that it's a really nice, solid, gentle lager. Um, I really, I've like, like, I'm actually getting more and more into lagers because of this podcast. I never thought I'd like a lager, but again, this is another lager that hits a nice spot. It's really, I, I think the word is perfect for it is it's a gentle lager and it's enjoyable. Uh, Jay, what about your stuff? So I'm drinking the Scaramanga Pale Ale, and I think Scaramanga was a villain in a Bond film. That's why I'm recognising the Scaramanga name. I think Simo, you can fact check that for me. Um, but it's 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 a delicious like it's actually really nice it's it, they refer to it as an extra pale ale which i think just basically means because they they're referring to the chinook hops that they're getting from the us for these um but you know it it does have that vibe of that naturally kind of hazy easy going pale ale that you want to come and expect from a you know a craft pale ale so i think they've i think gone have done a really good job with this pale ale um or extra pale ale, i should call it to Joe, uh, Francisco Scaramanga was indeed a bad guy in the Golden Gun film, uh, but it's also a type of a ladies' leather bag. So I think they've made the Gun Brewery have made this after the ladies' leather bag. That makes the most amount of sense. Yeah, me. definitely, definitely. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really worth a mention to say that on their website they actually have an entire page uh, that is about gluten-free beer, and they have six gluten-free beers, um, which includes the Chumney, uh, Chummy Bluster, the Spin Drift, the Project Babylon, Scaramanga, and the Numb Angel. They also, the Numb Angel got a, a gold award at the Free From Food Awards in 2020. So they're massive. And I really love the fact that, I, I know that, I don't know why, but I can't tell the difference between a normal gluten beer and this gluten-free beer. This gluten-free lager tastes lovely. Well, I think the big news that I think coming out of Gun Brewery is obviously they're relatively new and they're building up and they're obviously an, a, a farm-based enterprise. But the big news that I'm seeing on their Twitter accounts and Instagram is the fact that they are building a new brewery on the site. So the foundations are in as of the 2nd of, of March. Uh, so definitely it looks like a big like, potential factory or kind of brewery that's being built right there. Um, so I guess just watch this space. Uh, in the East Sussex countryside, there is going to be a lot more beer being produced. And, uh, you know, we will probably talk about other Sussex-based beers or Kent-based beers in that area um, because there are quite a few, um, you know, good-tasting beers or, or well-established beers there. But Gun Brewery seems to be like a new establ establishing themselves company. Um, and the fact that they're building a whole new dedicated brewery site on the farm, uh, you know, is, is massively to be encouraged because their beers right now, as I was saying, are, are quite tasty, um, you definitely wouldn't, you know, kick this out of bed. And, you know, I think, uh, I think, like, watch your eyes, eyes peel for more of Gun Brewery in the future. So on Instagram, they have 343 followers. And on Twitter, they have uh, 3,300 followers. So again, representing the fact that they're a relatively new company. Yeah. Branding wise, they are, they need some work. But that's just because they're a new company. Probably they haven't got the budget to spend on brand right now. They're just about production and beer, getting beer, and making beer. the beer. So watch this space for a new refresh of Gun Brewery in the future. Perfect. Finish that episode. And that's all we have time for from this week's episode of the I'll Try That podcast. And so from me, Joe, Rich, and Simo, goodbye. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and watch us on YouTube. Goodbye now. Always drink responsibly, and if you or anyone else needs some help, go to drinkaware.co.uk for more information. Drink Aware.